So let's prove our final theorem of the whole course. It has to do with finite fields, and it says that if you have a finite field f that has p to the n elements where p is prime, and f prime also is a finite field with the same number of elements, then those two finite fields are isomorphic. This is saying there's really only one finite field of a given size up to isomorphism. So let's prove this fact. So the field F has characteristic P. We saw Y in a previous video. So what that means is that the field F contains a subfield isomorphic to ZP. You could define a one-to-one -one ring homomorphism from ZP into the field F by sending an element A in ZP to one plus one plus one A times. So that means the field F contains ZP as a subfield. Now, I'm going to consider the group, not the field, but the group of non-zero elements in F. So this asterisk here will denote the set F, but throwing away the element zero. And I'm going to consider that the group together with the operation of multiplication. So this group has order p to the n minus 1, because I threw away the single element 0. And that means that if I take any element in the group x and raise it to the size of the group, I get the identity. So we saw this fact last quarter in group theory, that if you take an element in the group and raise it to the size of the finite group, you get the identity. In this case, since we're thinking about the group as the operation multiplication from the field, the identity is the multiplicative identity in the field, in other words, one. And that's got to be true for all elements x in the field. Okay, what that means is I could take this identity, subtract 1 from both sides, and multiply by x. And then I get 0 has to equal xp to the n minus x. So every element in the field satisfies this relationship. That means I can factor and write this as x minus alpha 1 times x minus alpha 2 all the way up till I get to x minus alpha pn. And here I'm saying my field f is just the field containing the elements alpha 1 through alpha pn. So here's the logic again. This identity is true from group theory. So I subtract 1 and multiply by x, and I get 0 is equal to this, which since every... So now this is a polynomial that has roots every element in the field. So I can factor it and write it as a product of linear terms where I just have the elements alpha 1 through alpha pn equaling my field. So similarly, this is also equal to x minus beta 1, x minus beta 2, until I get to x minus beta pn, where f prime, my second group, is beta 1 through beta pn. So using the same logic on the field f prime, I get this expansion. Okay, well now, I claim that the group 
f with the zero thrown away and together with the operation of the field multiplication, that group is cyclic. The reason is because I have you prove this as a homework exercise. So I wrote a homework exercise where I outline a proof of this fact. So if it's cyclic, we can let some element alpha generate the the group with non-zero elements. I'm thinking of this in the group theory sense in that every element in this group is simply just a power of alpha. So I'm going to let f of x be an element in the ring of polynomials with coefficients in ZP, since ZP is a subfield isomorphic to a, a subfield of F, I'm going to take an element F in the polynomials with coefficients in that subfield, and I'm going to let this be the minimal polynomial. for alpha. What, what we are saying with these two sentences is really this. We have the field F is isomorphic to ZP adjoined alpha. This is because the group here is cyclic. That means any non-zero element in my field is a power of alpha. That means my field contains a subfield isomorphic to ZP and also contains every possible power of alpha. Well, that's exactly what this field is. This field is the smallest field that contains ZP and every power of alpha. Now, if f is the minimal polynomial for alpha, then we've seen that this field is also isomorphic to the field of polynomials zpx, where I factor out by the ideal generated by my minimal polynomial. Okay, that's where we are so far. And to prove the theorem, what I'm going to do is I'm going to prove that F prime, the second field, is also isomorphic to this same factor ring, the same quotient ring. Here's how I'm going to do it. Since alpha is a root of the polynomial xp to the n minus x, that's because alpha is an element in the field F and therefore alpha is one of these alpha i's you see so it's a root. This polynomial is in zpx. Alpha is a root. F is the minimal polynomial. We see that f of x divides this polynomial, which I'm going to think of this polynomial as being factored using the betas. So there is a beta in the second field such that beta is a root of f. So f of x divides this 
product, that means f of x times some g of x is equal to this product. That means every root of f of x is also a root of this polynomial. So I could find a beta in the second field that's a root of this polynomial. Now we're pretty close to being done. So thus what we have is the field zp adjoin beta, that's isomorphic to zp x modded out by this same minimal polynomial, because beta is a, a root of this minimal polynomial, so I have this. This is isomorphic to a subfield of f prime. But since the size of this set is the same as the size of f, I have a subfield, so this subfield is the same size as the whole field. They are equal or isomorphic. So f prime is isomorphic to zp x modded out by this polynomial. So both f prime and f are isomorphic to the same factor ring. This was kind of a delicate proof, a little bit a little bit tricky, but I know you can get it. It uses a lot of the ideas that we've seen previously in our course. Okay, that is the last theorem of our course. Outstanding.